We've talked about uh, inner VLAN routing and layer 3 switching and how to go about doing that. Uh, and obviously the legacy method I mentioned is having an individual cable uh, between, if you have two routers, and if you have an individual cable between each one. And each cable would then be a VLAN, which is obviously a very inefficient method of doing that. Uh, the more efficient way of doing that would be then to use inner VLAN routing in a layer 3 switch. But what if you don't have a layer 3 switch? The stopgap between that uh, is to do router on a stick. Uh, this is something that was done for quite a while before layer 3 switches became affordable uh, and is still taught but not recommended because it's a very slow method of doing so. But if you're stuck and this is what you, all you have, uh, this is a way to do so. So what we're going to do is uh, configure router on a stick. Uh, so I'm going to go through a whole topology from scratch uh, like I try to normally do and uh, we will figure that. I'll show you and, and uh, explain what, what I'm doing along the way. So uh, since I'm dealing with a switch, you, you can actually do this in GNS. Uh, you can make a generic switch and configure it as a .1Q and I'll just show you that real quick for those of you who are using GNS to try and get this done. If you drop a switch down, we're going to have to make a trunk between the switch and the, uh, and the router. So we could choose this, tell it it's a dot one q and then you add it and it overwrites that. So dot one q, remember, is our encapsulation for trunking. So you can actually make trunk ports with this built-in switch here, uh, but you can't configure it beyond this. This is all you get. Uh, it's not a real switch. It's kind of like a, a built-in switch in Dynamips. It's kind of a fake method of doing it. Uh, so you could potentially do this using GNS. I'm just going to use Packet Tracer so we can go into the switch and show some config, uh, show commands and such. So let's drop a switch in here and we're going to drop a router into our topology. And then we're going to go ahead and add two computers. And let's cable these up. We're going to use port 0, it's going to go to port 1, and then 2 is going to go here and three will go off to this one. So a pretty simple network. What we're going to do is go into our switch and we're going to make two VLANs. So we're in config mode and we're going to add two VLANs. So let's do VLAN 2 and we'll name it IT and we'll do VLAN 3 and we'll name it HR. Uh, so then we, if we back out of this take a look at our VLANs. There's our two VLANs created, so that's all good. We're not going to configure any sort of IP address on this switch. I don't want to confuse you. We're going to have nothing layer 3 set up on this switch whatsoever. So now we have to go assign it to the ports. So PC0 there on the left is connected to port 2. So we're going to, I believe it's port 2, right? It starts at 1. Yep, port 2. Okay. So we're going to go into port 2. I'm using shorthand, remember, so this is interface, fast, ethernet, zero slash two. And we're going to make it a switch port, mode access. So now it's an access port to that PC. And we're going to tell what VLAN to use. So he's going to be on VLAN 2. And we'll turn the port on just in case. It's kind of habit. Always, I always no-shut everything, so even when it's redundant, uh, it's nice to do. We're going to do that for port 3 as well. You can see uh, the amber light there. It's renegotiating the uh, spanning tree and such. Uh, so let's do it on this one. We're going to do access VLAN 3. It's going to be renegotiating now as well. Oops. All right, we have two ports that are up. We have two ports that are in the correct VLANs, so the switch is good for that. Uh, so now we have to connect the switch to the router. And uh, so we have two VLANs here. So we have VLAN 1, or VLAN 2 on the left side and VLAN 3 on the right side. We need to get both of those VLANs to the router so that the router can then make them communicate uh, between those two VLANs, do that inner VLAN routing. In order to do that, this needs to be a trunk because it has to carry more than one VLAN. So this has to be a trunk. So this connection here, which was uh, FA01, right? Yep, FA01. 
that has to become a trunk port. So that's what we're going to go do. Actually, that should be. I'll no shot that. I won't do any access VLANs. Uh, so if we just do, do show VLAN, everything looks okay there, and uh, do show. All right, so trunk's not up yet, so that's fine. So we've made that a trunk. Let's go into our router now. On the router, we have to turn on the interface. And then we have to create sub interfaces for each network. Uh, so the way this works is uh, you create a sub interface, uh, which is kind of an alias. It's a it's a virtual interface that's attached to a physical interface. And then each of those sub interfaces will get an IP address for whatever network these VLANs are. And it's recommend you don't have to match the sub interface number with the VLAN number, but it's highly suggested that you do so. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So we're going to go into this was uh, what FAOO it starts at zero on the router, yeah. So we're going to go into here, and we're just going to say turn it on. All right, so now we can go to we'll back out one, uh, and there we are. It's trying to negotiate now, so that's good. So what we have to do now is make these sub interfaces. Uh, so, oh, and one thing I forgot. We need to set. We'll set a uh, native VLAN while we're here. So let's go into. Switch port trunk, native, and we'll use 99. Whoops. Native VLAN 99. There we go. All right, so we added native VLAN 99 to that switch. So we're going to do that over here, too. So let's make those two sub interfaces. So in order to do that, we just type interface FA and then 00 for this port. So we're making two virtual sub interfaces on this one port and we're going to do a dot and then dot says we're making that that uh, sub interface I'm going to match the number of the VLAN you don't have to but I highly recommend it so we're going to make 00.2 and 00.3 for VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 in here we're going to be setting up our uh, trunk information and VLAN information and such so here's where we're going to be saying uh, switch port. I'm sorry, not switch port. We're on a router. Encapsulation dot one Q, and then you can tell what VLAN you want. So this will be VLAN two. And then we're going to go. I'll just back out one. We'll go to interface zero zero dot three, and you can see when we do that, it creates it and brings it up immediately. Uh, and on these sub interfaces, we don't have to bring them up and down. Uh, they'll aut they're automatically up because the father interface is up. So zero zero, we already know shut. So all the sub interfaces are going to be up anyway. So let's make a uh, let's do the encapsulation on this. So this will be we're going to use dot one Q and VLAN three, and then I'm also going to do that native VLAN. So we're going to make dot ninety nine to ninety nine and then you can say native. And then I'll tell it it's the native VLAN. So now if we go back and show our interfaces, so we have zero zero, that's the actual physical interface. We have dot two and dot three, that's our two VLANs for the computers. And then we have dot ninety nine. So what we also have to do is we're going to go, I should have done this originally, but go back into those uh, dot two and dot three, and we have to give them IP addresses. Because this is obviously going to have to do with layer three routing, so we need to give them an address. So we use 2.1 to 
since this is a router, we'll use the uh, the first usable address on this network. I'll jump right over to dot three. There we go. Now we have our two IP addresses. That looks okay. We'll go back to our switch. Oops. All right, there we go. So I just checked our trunk status on our switch. Port one, which connects to our router, is now a dot one Q trunk. Native VLAN is 99. It's all up and running and happy. Allows all of our VLANs. We didn't specify any for the allowed command, so it's just going to allow everything. And it sees uh, VLANs 1, 2, and 3. So default VLAN plus 2 and 3. Uh, this is where, remember I was talking about the allowed command? Um, this is where you'll potentially want to say allowed VLANs 2 and 3, but not 1, since we have a whole bunch of ports here that are uh, still configured for VLAN 1. Uh, that's a security issue potentially, so VLAN 1 could make its way back to the router and beyond. Uh, so you may just want to say only the VLANs that you know are properly configured as access uh, to the hosts out there. So it may be a good idea to not allow VLAN 1 on this, but we will for here. So now we have to configure some PCs. So the one on the left is going to be on VLAN 2. So we'll make that, whoops, dot 2 on the second usable IP, and we have to set its gateway. So this one's gateway is going to be that router subinterface 2.1. So that was FA00.2, his IP. Now we're going to go into here, and we're going to do the same thing, but for dot 3. We're going to set the gateway. There we go. Check our route table. We have two directly connected networks, two and three. No gateway of last resort because there's no internet connecting off to this or some other wide network, so that's fine. Let's go into our first computer. And we'll ping himself. So everything looks okay there. Let's see if we can ping across. So we're trying to ping from PC0 to PC1. Remember that first ping is always going to time out. There we go. So now we're up and running. So what's happening here if you look at the blinking going on? Uh, PC0 is sending his traffic to the switch on VLAN 2. The switch doesn't know how to send him to VLAN 3 uh, because there's no routing done inside this switch. It's just a layer 2 switch. So it then sends it up the trunk interface hoping that the router will know what to do with it. The router receives it and then that checks its routing table and says, oh yeah, I know how to get to the three dot network. And then sends it onto the trunk again on the uh, the 0 0.3 uh, interface, sub-interface. It'll send it on VLAN 3 then. Uh, VLAN 3 will come back to the switch. Uh, it'll then go out the proper port for PC1. So that's how we're communicating across with no uh, layer 3 configured on this switch whatsoever. So all the traffic is coming to and from this single link to this router. So not only is the router a slower routing engine than doing wire speed layer 3 switching uh, right here, but you're also, you have bandwidth issues here because all these devices are going to be going, not just sending, but receiving traffic. You get double the amount of traffic basically on this uh, watt connection here because it has to come up to the router and then back to the router and then off to its destination for every single packet for every computer that you're trying to route this way. But you can do it. Uh, so as we see, and we'll just also go into PC1 and make sure you can ping correctly as well. So there we go. So PC1 is pinging PC0. Everything works correctly. So that is router on a stick configuration, and uh, we'll move on with uh, some static routing.